I had worked so hard. I had almost successfully completed the transition from a non-tech background to a data scientist. Hell, I even had an internship. I had spent hours essentially relearning the math I'd forgotten since high school. And more importantly, I'd overcome my fear of coding. I put in the hours and damn it, I may not have been a pro, but I could now code and not feel like a fraud. And then for a couple of days, I kept hearing those four syllables. Chat GPT. It started off as an occasional tweet or a video in my suggested, and soon it took over every feed that I saw, and I knew I had to try it out. I felt sick. It could do everything I could do in a fraction of the time, and more. I remembered one of the first assignments I had in uni, when I knew literally nothing about coding. The one assignment that made me wonder if data science was for me, or I should just drop out. I had spent three days in the library non-stop, and despite that, I couldn't figure it out. Eventually I got there, so I decided to test GPT. It solved it within 10 seconds. What's the point of it? Hi mom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, call, uh, tell dad I'm coming home. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. There's, there's AI. Just, yeah, you know, there's, there's gotta be no jobs anymore, okay? The robots are here and they're taking over, okay? So, I'm coming home. Okay, so let me set your ease. If you're like me, you might be a bit of a warrior. So that was my reaction, pure fear when I first saw ChatGPT. And it didn't help that every single thumbnail about GPT on YouTube was like, the robots are gonna steal your jobs. So after I got past that phase, <laughs> I've actually been using ChatGPT in my everyday life as a data scientist. And I can honestly say it is a tool and all it's done is just increase my productivity so much. I mean, it's great for debugging code, and that's the obvious use. It's basically a tailor-made stack overflow if you have any errors, but whenever I'm assigned any work at my job, at first, before GPT came out, and I was just starting in data science, I would get assigned a piece of work, and in my head, I would have so many different potential approaches I could take. I could do that, but is that correct? No, I could do that. No, but I could do this instead. So I would literally have paralysis analysis and just waste like the first few hours after I'm assigned just panicking and researching every single method on what I could possibly do. But now with GPT, I can just describe the problem and it can give me a couple of ideas, a general starting point for these projects. Not only that, it can give me a list of advantages and disadvantages and GPT is not perfect. So I always make sure to corroborate what it says with my own research most of the time. It's right, but for more detail, you have to look stuff up yourself. And honestly, since I've been given more responsibility at my job in recent weeks and months, GPT has just become so useful for me. Okay, so point number two, don't think you can use GPT as your coding monkey, where you just give it a prompt, leave it to code, and you walk away and never have to learn a lick of coding in your life. I know it seems like you can do that, but that's probably not a good idea because I'm not gonna lie, it might be hard to believe, but sometimes GPT can give you things which are just plain wrong. And if you don't know how to code and examine where GPT went wrong exactly, you'll just be sat there in your chair like, uh, I told it what to do. I copy pasted it into Python and it's not working. Don't know what to do now. Or even worse, it might not even give you an error. It might be code that runs, but isn't doing what you think it's supposed to be doing. So then you end up producing terrible results and you don't know why. Trust me, you don't want to be known as that dodgy data scientist who without GPT is just lost in a void, okay? A simile that I've been developing and that I like, I don't know if anyone else has put it like this, but GPT is basically like Google Translate. So imagine you go to a foreign country, right? Google would be good at translating between languages, but if you can't read the output of the language correctly, you don't know if what it said is correct. You just know how to pronounce the sounds of that word when it's written down. Because both Google Translate and GPT can get things wrong at times, especially if there's any ambiguity, you have to have enough knowledge to be able to examine that output to spot mistakes and know if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. On top of that, if you were to apply for GPT without knowing any coding, it's like going to a foreign country, applying for a bunch of jobs and telling them, oh no guys, I don't know the language now and I don't plan to learn the language, I've got Google Translate, I'm fine. It's like, yeah, 
you can do a lot with Translate, but there'll always be intricacies that you'll miss out by not knowing the language. And also, everything you do will take so much longer because you have to keep translating, get things wrong, and that sort of thing. And interpreting the output from Translate, or ChatGPT in this case, will also just take so much longer. So right now, I will say that employers will probably prefer somebody who's a fluent coder just because it will make the whole workflow, especially when you're working with different teams, just so much easier. I think that being a domain expert might become more important than ever. I mean, we've always known that being a domain expert or at least having domain knowledge was key. But now with GPT, the bar for coding has been lowered slightly. So that means most people now have the ability to write faster and more efficient code given enough time and prompts. So in the past, when an employer had to choose between an elite coder with limited domain knowledge and an okay coder, but with excellent domain knowledge, they might have been more inclined to go with the elite coder because that person could just, you know, fail fast, fail often, fail forward, and just keep iterating. But now the domain expert has a little bit of a leg up because now with GPT, they know what they're supposed to do and they know some coding so they can implement it much quicker than they could before. So that might become more preferable for employers as they go forward. So now with excellent domain knowledge and good coding skills plus GPT, you can really put a little bit of daylight, I think, between you and your competitors as you go forward. And that's thanks to GPT helping your coding skills because you already know what moves the needle forward in your industry. So now you just need to implement. So basically, we now need to have more arrows in our quiver than just knowing how to code. And we just have to keep finding ways to set ourselves apart. I was actually listening to this podcast called Data Framed, and the guest made an amazing point that just helped everything click in my head about GPT. He said that over the next few years, our evolution as data scientists and coders in general will be to become code authors. So the ability to write detailed prompts with no ambiguity will become a much more important skill. But then also the ability to analyze that code and interrogate it to make sure it's doing what you want it to do will be just as important. Even if code author is not in the job description, if you can use GPT, when you do get the job, it's really gonna help you to move smoother up the ranks and just be a standout employee if you know how to use it right. As data scientists, I think we always knew that our job would be ever-changing. I mean, if you thought that data science in 2030 would look the same as it did in 2020, you might have been a little bit naive, but here's the beauty. We now literally have the world's best teacher with GPT. So all we have to do is ensure that we keep upskilling and GPT can help us to do this, to stay up to date with what we need to know in the industry and also what our competitors know and how we can keep elevating ourselves. So basically, it's up to us to take advantage of this amazing opportunity and decide what knowledge we're going to acquire with it. If you want a detailed walkthrough of how I use GPT every day as a data scientist, click the card. But I will leave you with this. As data scientists, we have to adapt to and embrace the changes that are occurring. And honestly, with GPT, we have the opportunity to decide how we're going to differentiate ourselves. It's time to embrace the future and make the most of the opportunities that lie ahead of us.